The cultures that we have so far discussed in the previous module for the growth of bacterial populations are called batch cultures, in which the bacteria grow in a fixed volume of culture medium. Since the nutrients are not renewed, exponential growth is limited to a few generations. Bacterial cultures can be grown as continuous cultures where they are maintained in a state of exponential growth over long periods of time. In a continuous culture, fresh fermentation media is continuously added to the growth chamber while effluent containing the biomass products and unused nutrients are continuously removed. Thus, the volume of the liquid in the growth chamber is maintained constant. The growth rate of the cells in the growth chamber is proportional to the rate of loss of cells through overflow and hence automatically to the rate of inflow of the fresh medium. The basic question is, how does the rate of inflow of fresh medium into the growth chamber determine the growth rate of the culture? Continuous cultures are mainly controlled by two factors. First, concentration of a limiting nutrient and dilution rate. Relationship between growth rate and rate of cell loss can be given as growth rate in growth chamber is equal to rate of cell loss through overflow. Growth rate of bacterial cells can be described as dx upon dt is equal to kx, where x is cell mass per milliliter, t is time and k is the growth rate constant. Since growth rate is equal to cell loss, rate of cell loss through overflow is equal to dx upon dt depends upon the dilution rate d. d is equal to f upon v. Therefore, dx upon dt is equal to fx upon v is equal to dx where f is the flow rate, v is the culture volume and d is the dilution rate. The dilution rate is the rate at which the medium flows through the growth chamber relative to the volume of the culture vessel. Thus, at steady state, where the growth rate is equal to the rate of cell removal, kx is equal to dx, hence k is equal to d and thus growth rate is equal to the dilution rate. The most common device for continuous culture is a chemostat. This can be used to maintain a bacterial population at a constant density, a situation that is in many more ways more similar to bacterial growth in natural environments. As can be seen in this figure, in a chemostat, the growth chamber is connected to a reservoir of sterile medium. Once growth is initiated, fresh medium is continuously supplied from the reservoir. The volume of the fluid in the growth chamber is maintained at a constant level by an overflow drain. The rate at which fresh medium enters the growth chamber is equal to the rate at which the spent medium leaves the chamber. As stated above, the chemostat is mainly controlled by concentration of a limiting nutrient and dilution rate. All the nutrients are added in excess in the growth medium except one nutrient which may be a growth factor or a vitamin. This limiting nutrient controls the growth rate of the culture which is determined by the rate at which new medium enters the growth chamber. The final cell density depends upon the concentration of limiting nutrient. If the dilution rate is very low, some of the cells might die due to lack of nutrients because the limiting nutrient is not being added fast enough to keep up with the cell metabolism. At the other extreme, if the dilution rate is very high, the cells might actually be washed out of the growth chamber because the dilution rate is greater than the maximum growth rate. Hence, 
a chemostat operates best at low dilution rates. In the previous module, we have learned that when a bacterial culture is grown in a liquid media, the media becomes turbid. The more the number of cells, the more is the turbidity. This turbidity can be measured by means of a colorimeter or a spectrophotometer. Both these devices measure the amount of unscattered light that emerges. Another device for maintaining continuous cultures is a turbidostat. As shown in the figure, it has a photocell to measure turbidity in the growth chamber. Like the chemostat, it has a growth chamber which is attached to a reservoir of sterile medium and it also has an outlet for removal of the spent medium. The flow rate of the fresh medium into the growth chamber is adjusted in such a way that constant turbidity or cell density is maintained in the growth chamber. Unlike the chemostat, the culture medium does not have a limiting nutrient and also does not have a constant dilution rate. The, the turbidostat operates best at high dilution rates. Let us now move on to the next type of cultures which are called synchronous cultures. Studying the growth of bacterial populations in batch or continuous cultures does not allow us to understand about the growth behavior of individual cells because the distribution of cell size among the members of the population is completely random. Not all cells grow and divide at the same time. Information about the growth behavior of individual bacterium can however be obtained by the study of synchronous cultures. Synchronous cultures are cultures composed of cells which are all at the same stage of the bacterial cell cycle. Hence, all the cells will divide at the same time, grow for a generation time and again divide at the same time. Measurements made on synchronized cultures are equivalent to measurements made on individual cells. The synchronous cultures therefore show a biphasic growth pattern. There are two methods available for producing the synchronous cultures. The first are induction methods. They rely on synchronizing an exponentially growing culture by appropriate and usually sudden changes in the environment such as alteration in the temperature, concentration of nutrients or illumination for photoautotrophs. For example, if the temperature of an exponentially growing culture which has an optimum growth temperature of 37 degrees is suddenly brought down to 20 degrees and maintained for some time, the low temperature retards cell division. The low temperature slows down the metabolism and all the cells slowly reach maturity but none of them divides. Now, when the temperature is again suddenly raised to 37 degrees, all the cells divide synchronously. After growing synchronously for a few generations, the cultures rapidly lose synchrony because not all cells in the population divide at exactly the same time, size or age. The second methods are selection methods. In this method, from an actively growing culture, the cells at a particular point in the growth cycle are selected and physically separated, say, when the cells have just completed cell division. Therefore, the smallest cells in the bacterial population are those that have just completed the process of cell division. The methods used for separation include centrifugation on a density gradient. All the cells of the same size can be obtained and now when they are grown in a culture medium, they all start their life cycle from the same point. Second, filtration of cells through a cellulose nitrate filter. The most widely used method for obtaining synchronous cultures is the Hemstetter-Cummings apparatus. 
As can be seen in the figure, it consists of a glass vessel with an inlet and an outlet and a membrane filter with a specific pore size. The pore size of the filter is selected in such a way that the smallest cells will pass off through the filter. These are the cells which have just divided and now would go through the entire life cycle before dividing again. On the other hand, the cells which get stuck up in the filter are the ones which are the largest and which are on the verge of cell division. These can be collected by inverting the filter and passing medium through the filter from above. When the cells divide, they fall off the filter giving a continuous supply of newly born cells which can grow synchronously.